What's going on guys? It's Sean Colvin here and today we're going to be reviewing my chest back shoulder session. I start off the lift with a barbell penlay row and I'm doing this for three sets, about eight repetitions, but here I get 10, I believe. Um, I'm bringing the bar to the lower portion of my abdomen and I am setting the bar off on the ground from a dead stop. Uh, usually I like doing barbell rows with a completely horizontal back to target complete back width and thickness, but here I'm just experimenting with the pen lay version. And then the next lift I engage in is the low incline dumbbell press to target the upper portion of the pecs. I have a slow eccentric component to the lift. I am specifically bringing the dumbbells down all the way to the outer side of the chest. And I am have a slow eccentric component, of course, um, making sure to breathe and brace. And I'm going for about 12 repetitions on this one, more on the higher end. And I get, I think, 12 on this. And yeah, this is a great upper pec builder, especially the low incline. Studies show greater activation of the upper pec with this one. Next lift I engage in is a chest supported lateral raise. And yes, I like this better. Obviously standing is fine, but this one erases the core stability so you could really focus on targeting the lateral head of the deltoid. I'm going for, I guess, AMRAP on this one. Three sets, uh, 12 reps about, and yeah, there, that's my boy in the background. Um, I love the chest supported laterals. You really get to focus on the lateral head of the deltoid. Also, you get even some trap activation as well. You could probably see my trap squeezing in the back during that video. And then the next portion, Oh, and also I will say that I go to failure and beyond in this. Like I just go until my shoulders cannot bring the weight up anymore because the deltoids are a really um, thorough muscle group. Like they can take a fucking beating. They are the largest uh, muscle in like the upper body, I believe. Bigger than they're bigger than the pecs. They can take a fucking beating. Not compared. The back's bigger, of course, but compared to the pecs, shoulders are bigger. The next movement I'm doing is a neutral grip hammer strength machine row with of course versa grips just like i use in the barbell penley row you've got to be using your grips and whatnot or straps whatever you have to cancel out forearm activation because your forearms always give out before your back because your back is a larger muscle group and i am doing this for about three sets 10 to 12 repetitions um once I reach failure, I'm going beyond failure, like always. It's a stable movement. You could take this to as far as you can until literally you can't move your arms back anymore. Simple as that. Um, and yeah, this movement is great. I really feel my traps a lot on this one. And obviously, you could feel either more lats or traps based on your elbow path. But here, I'm just driving them back sideways, trying to get more traps on this movement. Um, I love the hammer strength chest supported row. You can really focus on the stretch and the squeeze. And then the next exercise, my favorite, one of my favorites of all time, the dumbbell cross bench pullover for rib cage expansion. I even start closing my eyes on this lift as I'm like really meditating through this. I'm doing this for about three sets, uh, 10 to 12 reps. You could even do eight reps if you wanted, but I'm doing 10 to 12. Um, I'm going as deep as I possibly can. I'm really focusing on the, the full range of motion, the stretch in the rib cage, the chest and the lats, but I'm just really trying to focus on just stretching it out. Stretch is really important on these pullovers. Um, yeah, I, you don't want to, you could take it to failure. I've done that before, but you want to be cautious because your shoulders are in a little bit of a precarious position. Um, so yeah, one rep shy failure or yeah, that's probably the sweet spot on this one. The next lift I engage in, about probably my last lift for this video, will be the Nautilus Machine Shrugs. I am doing this for about two, two, you know, three sets, two to three sets, and 10 to 12 reps, and I'm just powering through. I eventually start slowing my reps down because I will say I was doing more of a cheat style at the beginning or the power shrug as some lifters quote it but yeah usually i like to do it with either a slow eccentric and a focus on the stretch at the bottom or i could do it power style but yeah it's great for trap development of course and i think it's helped as a recent actually i haven't been i haven't done a lot of shrugs for the first couple years of my lifting journey but after a couple years i decided to get into it because i wanted to see how 
It'll affect my traps because rows do grow huge traps on its own. The mid traps are highly activated and highly used in all rows because you got a row to grow. And yeah, on this, I am just shrugging. So yeah, I hope you learned something new. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment. Um, I will be continuing to posting my lifts. I'm pretty consistent with my programming and whatnot and my uh, order of exercises and the exercises I've been doing because I've been really messing with what I'm doing in the gym and you got to love what you're doing in order to be consistent with it, of course. And that goes with anything in life, but in the gym, you really got to like like what you're doing and know what you want to do and be consistent with it over time. You can't program hop and expect to make long-term gains. You have to be consistent with something progressively overloaded over time and then you will succeed in the end. Thank you so much. Have a great night.